Um, welcome, guys. Um, in the previous session, uh, we discussed about serotonin. Uh, but when I was concluding about serotonin, I mentioned these two drugs, methesergide, together with uh, lysergic acid, either amide, okay, LSD. And I told you these two are known as egot alkaloids. Now, today we'll be looking at egot alkaloids. So, egot alkaloids, these are uh, compounds which are derived from a fungus known as Craviceps papillae. And uh, some of the important compounds include egotamine, egometrin, or which is known as egonavin, egotoxin, bromocryptin, dihydroegotamine, and methesergide together with, with LSD, uh, disergic acid, the ether amide. Now, the ones which are um, highlighted in red are amine alkaloids together with LSD. Maybe I could write that in red. Okay. LSD is an amine alkaloid. LSD together with these two, egotamine or egonavine and methesergide. Also, we have another compound which is an amine alkaloid known as 6 methylgodin. Okay, then the peptide alkaloid are these in, in, in blue now, uh, namely bromocritine, dehydroegotamine, and egotamine, and also uh, another one which is known as egocryptine. Okay, now these egot alkaloids possess partial agonistic and antagonistic effects at serotonin, alpha, and dopaminergic receptors. Okay, so please remember that, that they have agonistic, partial agonistic and antagonistic activities at alpha adrenal receptors, serotonin receptors, and they are also agonists at uh, CNS, dopaminergic receptors, okay? Now, these drugs are only alpha blockers that cause vasoconstriction. They are the only alpha blockers. This is paradoxical. You expect that an alpha broker, alpha 1, that is, alpha 1 blockers to, to, to cause uh, vasodilation, but this cause vasoconstriction. Why? Because of their partial agonistic activity on the alpha and serotonin, uh, to be specific, 5H2 receptors, okay? Uh, which is uh, their, that activity is maximum with egotamine. Now, hydrogenation of the compounds usually decrease their alpha. Please note this it usually decreases their alpha agonistic activity, but increases the alpha blocking potential, okay? So, dehydroegotamine as compared to egotamine, it has very little vasoconstricting activity because it is more of an alpha blocker than an alpha agonist, okay? But egotamine, as compared to dehydroegotamine, it will be more of an alpha agonist, so it will cause vasoconstriction. It is more of an alpha agonist than an alpha blocker. Please understand that that point is very important. Now, EGOT derivatives can cause dry, dry gangrene of the hand and feet as well as coronary vasospasm because if they have alpha, uh, alpha, this partial agonistic activity on alpha adrenal receptor, you understand that they will induce vasoconstriction and that can cause ischemia. Okay, so leading to a gangrene of hand and feet. They can also cause coronary vasospasm. So if they can cause coronary vasospasm, I would highly contraindicate them with people in people with coronary artery disease or the ischemic heart disease, okay? So uh, put that in mind, okay? So let, let's, let's discuss further uh, about this, um, um, this EGOT. Alkaloids. But before we do that, why don't we discuss some of the pharmacological actions? Now, pharmacological actions of EGOT alkaloids in the, we first look in the central nervous system, then we will go to look in the, in the cardiovascular system, then we will look in the, in the reproductive system, especially the female, 
to be specific, the uterine smooth muscles, so the uterus, we look in the uterus, I'm trying to write this with a mouse, which is quite challenging. Then we look at uh, effects on the GIT, okay, the gastrointestinal tract. So in the CNS, we have, we look at the effect of LSD. LSD, the sergic acid, the ether amide, it is a powerful hallucinogen. Okay, it is known as a psychedelic. It's a very powerful hallucinogen. So then we have bromocryptin. This bromocryptin, it is a dopaminergic agonist. So it mimics the actions of dopamine. And if you can remember dopamine in your anterior pituitary, dopamine was inhibiting the release of prolactin from your lactotrophs. Okay, you can remember that. So if it, it inhibits the release of prolactin, you can agree with me that it can be used for the treatment of hyperprolactinemia. In the GIT, uh, the sensitivity varies, but nausea can cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Okay? Then in the cardiovascular system, on the vascular smooth muscles, the gotamine, I said here, gotamine, uh, will cause... Uh, constrict, it will constrict most blood vessels. That is what I told you. Okay. Then, egotamine, egonovin, and methesagide, all are partial agonists at 5H2. I told you that, receptors. And uh, they are used in the treatment of migraine, but I said they can cause coronary vasospasm. The uterine smooth muscles, it, these egot alkaloids stimulate muscle contraction. Okay. And the pregnant uterus is the most sensitive and the most sensitive, especially at term. So they can they can induce a labor. Okay. So I would not use them. I would not use egot alkaloids on a pregnant woman who is say six months or uh, who are who is six months. The, the pregnancy is six months. So because it can even induce an abortion. Okay. So uh, those are some of the actions. Then let's look at this individually. Now, egotamine and dehydroegotamine, we said they can be used in the treatment of acute attack, attacks of migraine, but they're contraindicated in patients with ischemic heart disease because they can they have the propensity to cause coronary vasospasm. Now, you need to know that the absorption of egotamine and dehydroegotamine is enhanced by caffeine. So patients, to, to enhance the, the absorption across the, the GIT, you take them together with caffeine. Now, we have dehydro, uh, dehydroegotoxin. Dehydroegotoxin can be used in the treatment of dementia. Okay, Then bromocryptin, I told you, it can be used in the treatment of Parkinsonism, hyperprolactinemia, acromegaly, and also I think diabetes type 2 can can. can can be treated. Then with the sergide, we said it can be used in the prophylaxis of migraine attack, but it has some side effects, which I will remind you uh, that prolonged use can result in pulmonary, endocardio, and retroperitoneal fibrosis. And remember, endocardial fibrosis can lead to valvular uh, dysfunction. Okay. Okay, then. I think we have not discussed egometrin or egonavin. Egometrin and egonavin, because they act on the on the uterus, they can causing contraction of the uterine smooth muscles. They can be used to control postpartum hemorrhage. Remember, another drug which can be used to do that is carbaprost, which is a PGF, a prostaglandin F2 alpha derivative. Okay. And also, uh, egonavin can also be used in the diagnosis of 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 uh, variant uh, angina, okay? So, but I told you these drugs are contraindicated in people with coronary vasospasm or the, which is an obstructive vascular disorder, okay? So, uh, because this, these alkaloids come from a fungus, you can find a, a pa patient might come and uh, we might present with some of toxicity due to these egot alkaloids and they can include uh, GIT effects such as vomiting, diarrhea, 
also those are the ones which you can see and if and not this fungus can grow in even in food okay so if a pregnant mother takes a food which is contaminated with this fungus you can know you can see how uh, 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 catastrophic that can be so please note that so so please note that uh, they can cause those effects so especially on the tit vomiting diarrhea in the cns it can, can, can cause hallucinations okay so and they, note that they, they since they inhibit release of prolactin especially bromocriptin can be used in the treatment of prolactin hyperprolactinemia remember you don't want a lot of prolactin in your body because prolactin itself inhibits the hypophysiogonadal axis and can cause infertility so thank you and uh, in the next session we'll be looking at migraines specifically thank you